it's important to not lose hope because having psoriasis on the skin can be very distressing to patients, even leading some to depression and mental health issues. So it's important to know that there is hope. Just contact your primary care doctor, your dermatologist, a rheumatologist, anyone that can get you plugged into the right pathway to care. everyone, welcome back to Fundamentals with Dr. Dobio Bassi. I'm a physician scientist, board certified in dermatology and dermatopathology. August is my birthday month, so comment below if you were also born in August, and a happy birthday to all viewers that were born in August. August is also Psoriasis Awareness Month as well as Hair Loss Awareness Month. In this video, we're going to cover a few fundamental facts about psoriasis. Psoriasis is a primary disorder of the immune system that results in inflammation that affects multiple organs, including the skin and the joints, as well as the cardiovascular system, meaning your heart and your blood vessels. There is a common disorder that I see also in my clinic called atopic dermatitis. It's a type of eczema. Psoriasis differs from atopic dermatitis because the primary disorder is with the skin barrier itself not the immune system. So in atopic dermatitis, there tends not to be other effects on other organs, unlike psoriasis that can affect the joints and the heart. Atopy refers to an immune response against something that is harmless in the environment, resulting in a hypersensitivity to the environment. So this can manifest in the skin, you get atopic dermatitis, it can manifest in the lungs, you get asthma, and it can manifest in the sinuses and you get allergic rhinitis, which can be seasonal allergies or environmental allergies. So the primary defect in atopic dermatitis is with a skin barrier protein, which is found at the topmost layer of the epidermis called the stratum corneum, which I discussed in the previous video. And this protein is called filaggrin. It is a genetic mutation in filaggrin that makes it ineffective in what it does and therefore irritants, allergens, infections get in easily into the skin and also moisture leaves the skin. We call that transepidermal water loss. All of these come together to result in a skin that is hypersensitive to the environment, tends to dry out easily, tends to itch easily, tends to get infected easily and inflamed easily. Psoriasis, on the other hand, the primary problem is with the immune system, so an imbalance results in inflammation that affects the skin, causes the skin to high, what we call hyperproliferate, meaning get thick, get very scaly, because with making all these thick skin, the skin doesn't get a chance to mature normally, and therefore there is a thick scale. Psoriasis can be itchy or non-itchy, but that inflammation can also affect the joints, resulting in a destructive arthritis, meaning a destructive inflammation of the joints. It could be any joint in the body. And there are different forms of psoriatic arthritis. And it can also affect the heart and the blood vessels, resulting in an increased risk of heart disease, such as strokes, heart attacks, as well as affect the brain. With psoriasis now, and especially when it's severe, it's considered a part of the metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome refers to multiple risk factors that increase risk of major adverse cardiovascular events or heart attacks, strokes, and other unwanted outcomes of having these risk factors. The metabolic syndrome includes diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, obesity, and now psoriasis is considered part of that list. So it's very important to consult a dermatologist to begin managing any rash you have on your skin that mimics psoriasis, as well as see your primary care doctor or a joint doctor called a rheumatologist to address psoriatic arthritis. The good thing is there are lots of treatments out there to address 
this inflammatory condition called psoriatic disease. And so it's important to get plugged in to begin treatment early so that this inflammation doesn't progress and affect other organs. Psoriasis can also affect the nails and there are different findings on the nails that can be suggestive of having the systemic or the internal inflammation that results in psoriasis. These include what we call onycholysis, which is a lifting up of the free edge of the nail, pitting, almost like someone used a tiny ice pick to tap on the nail. So it's called irregular pitting of the nail. Splinter hemorrhages, which are tiny bleeding in the, the between the nail plate and the nail bed or the skin underneath the nail. They look like small, tiny black lines. When you start to see nail disease, this can be a clue as to what is happening inside the body, such as we see in psoriatic disease. The psoriasis of the nail and the scalp can be a clue to the risk of having psoriatic arthritis. So it is important to get these changes addressed. There's an interesting phenomenon with psoriasis called kebnerization or autosensitization. This just refers to psoriasis going to areas where the skin is traumatized or the joints are traumatized. And so the inflammation, which is involved in healing, when there is an injury on the skin, whether from a burn, a scratch, chronic rubbing, the inflammation goes to that site to heal it, but in doing that, it can bring some of the psoriasis forming immune cells and then result in psoriasis forming in that area of injury. So with psoriasis, you want to be careful about injuring the skin or having anything that can cause trauma to the skin. Comment below if you know anyone that has psoriasis or you yourself have psoriasis, because psoriasis is also inherited um, in the family lineage. So a lot of dermatologists would ask patients if they have a family history of psoriasis once there are certain risk factors. There are different treatments of psoriasis, including topicals, meaning creams and ointments, solutions, lotions. Um, in the past, it used to be treatments with coal tar, another topical treatment. But nowadays, since research has shown that psoriasis is not just a skin disease, it's primarily an immune system disease, a lot of the treatments are now targeting the immune system to rebalance it so that the psoriasis inflammation is better controlled, both for the skin condition, but also for the joints, as well as the risk to other organs. So consult a dermatologist, get evaluated. There are some mimickers of the psoriasis rash as well as other causes of joint pains, joint stiffness, which are symptoms of um, joint swelling, which are symptoms of psoriatic disease, but other arthritis. So it's important to get these evaluated as early as you can so that early intervention can prevent long-term consequences. Psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis can be effectively treated, but it's important to note that psoriatic arthritis can be destructive to the joints and so early intervention prevents or slows down that destruction. The treatments that target the immune system are called biologics, and biologics are injections under the skin of mimickers of the immune system component called antibodies that can now go and help with that rebalancing of the immune system. And there are different types with different targets. So depending on your skin disease, the amount of plaques or um, lesions you have on your skin depending on if you have psoriatic arthritis all of those things can contribute in the decision of which to use there are also oral medications for psoriasis that can help with that immune system rebalancing so there are options it's important to not lose hope because having psoriasis on the skin can be very distressing to patients even leading some to depression and mental health issues so it's important to know that there is hope. Just contact your primary care doctor, your dermatologist, a rheumatologist, anyone that can get you plugged into the right pathway to care. Thank you very much for watching. You are all fundamentally awesome. Please subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell as well as the like button, and leave a comment below on this topic. I hope you have a wonderful day and God bless.